Okay, so this show, I've been observing it here in the lambing shed for about two hours. Um, it's, in that time, she hasn't progressed. So the initial sign of lambing was the appearance of the water bags. And since those water bags initially appeared, the O hasn't actually progressed onwards in the, in the process of lambing. We, we would have expected her to have delivered her lambs in the two hours. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to intervene. I'm going to, have a, going to do a manual examination to see how the lambs are presented and to see if they're ready to be delivered. So the first thing you'll notice is I'm wearing gloves. Uh, it's really important from a hygiene perspective um, that we don't introduce any bacteria and any infection into the uterus of the ewe when we're assisting. So I have gloves on to pre pre prevent that from happening. I also have placed some lubrication on my arm just so that it reduces the friction. So what I need to do now is restrain the ewe and I'll actually just begin the physical examination. Okay, so I've, I've passed my hand into the uterus and as I said, the ewe had, begin, had begun lambing about two hours ago and I can see now why she hasn't progressed. The two front feet are presented, so that's normal. The normal delivery of a lamb is the two feet followed by the head. But in this case, the head is twisted back along the side of the lamb's body. And it's actually almost impossible for the lamb to be delivered in that fashion. So what I'm trying to do now is to correct <coughs> that malpresentation. And I have moved the lamb's head along and it's now sitting correctly on top uh, it's sitting correctly on top of the two front feet. So I will try now to deliver that lamb. Hopefully you can see now the two front feet are just coming, moving out along here. So I'm applying a little bit of traction, just a little bit of gentle pressure to aid the movement of the lamb out. And now in a moment, you will see the nose of the lamb appear. So here now we can see the nose beginning to appear. So I'm going to continue to apply some gentle pressure on the legs and I'll work with the ewe as she's contracting. So I can feel when the contractions are going to come. I apply a little bit of pressure and now the next contraction I expect will have this lamb delivered. Normally you position yourself behind the ewe. Now there we go, the head is out. So once you get the head, that's usually the broadest part of the lamb. And once the head is delivered, you would expect the rest of the delivery to progress as normal. So the lamb now, as you can see, it's shaking its head. That's in an effort to reduce all that, or to remove all that fluid from the lung. And we'll just gently, and it's very important to be gentle in this process, we'll gently assist the lamb in passing out. And there we go, see the lamb is shaking his head now immediately. We'll turn the ewe around and she will start to tend that lamb. So this is really important in nature. First of all, this action, it dries off the lamb to prevent that lamb suffering from hypothermia. You can see she's pawing at the lamb to, in attempt to wake up that lamb to get the lamb to start to attempt to stand. Bear in mind, in nature, sheep are a prey animal. So you can imagine a newborn lamb lying still on the ground like this is a very nice meal for a predator. So the ewe is licking the lamb to dry him off to prevent hypothermia. She might paw at him with her foot uh, in order to, to wake him up to get that lamb up and going so he can get stand, suckle and begin to follow the ewe around. Within about 15 minutes, you would expect this lamb to be standing and attempting to suckle the ewe. And you can see here, she's giving, her, giving them great encouragement to do that. This particular breed of sheep, she's referred to as a mule. She's a cross between a blue-faced Leicester ram and a black-faced mountain ewe. And one of the important traits and one of the key characteristics of this breed of sheep is that they're very good mothers. They have really good maternal instincts and they are very prolific. What I mean by prolific is they can have a large number of lambs at a single birth time. So twos, threes, and even fours in some cases are not unusual. We had a sheep here on the farm earlier this week which actually gave birth to six live lambs. And while she wasn't a mule, she was one of the other prolific strains we have on the farm. So I think that ewe has been scanned for two lambs. All our ewes are scanned in mid-pregnancy, so we know firstly if they're pregnant, and then secondly how many lambs they're actually carrying. So what I'll do now is I'll just check to see uh, the, if the second lamb is ready to be delivered. You 
you'll note at all times I kept this glove clean. I didn't put it onto the straw or onto the gates because again, this is going to be going back into the uterus and we don't want to risk introducing any in infection. So again, the second lamb is also malpresented and we have almost the opposite situation in this case. The head is presented, uh, but there are no legs to be, to be felt. So what I'll just, it's quite a simple situation to solve once you're familiar with lambing, uh, but it does take practice to become familiar with it. So what I have done now, I've moved my hand along the lamb's neck and I've located the legs on either side of the body. And again, very carefully, I've brought those legs forward. So we have the lamb now, the two legs are coming and the head is sitting on top of those two legs. So internally, I've just moved that lamb through the pelvis. So the legs are, have now moved through the pelvis and I'm just checking again to make sure the head is following. So here we see again, the two legs are coming. So again, and that little bit of blood is normal and the head is coming again. The second lamb is all, almost always easier to deliver than the first. You see that lamb is moving out slowly. Again, always nice and gentle. You can see some of the fluid in the nose and mouth, which we need to remove. Again, a little shake of the head by the lamb. A little cough to clear out the lungs. Just move this lamb around to his mother. Again, she will start to tend that lamb immediately. So we have a nice set of twin lambs uh, delivered from this mule ewe. I suspect those lambs are approximately six to seven kilos birth weight each, which would be on the larger side for twins. And again, you see a very good mother closely tending the lambs, licking them to dry them off and using her foot in an attempt to, you know, to liven them up, to wake them up. So you see the lambs are shaking their heads, clearing out the fluid uh, from the lungs to allow them to start to breathe. Um, there's one final task then you should always perform when you're lambing a ewe like this. Uh, we need to check to make sure that her, her udder or her mammary gland is functioning correctly. Uh, so the udder is split into two sides or it has two teeth. Uh, when the ewe is dry, the end of the teeth will seal over with a wax seal. Uh, so when the ewe is not lactating, it'll seal over with a wax seal to prevent, uh, prevent bacterial ingress into the uterus so, or into the, into the udder. So we'll just try to remove that wax seal. There we go, we can see that the, the milk is flowing. Very good colostrum. It's almost the consistency of custard. So a nice flow of colostrum here from the udder. A tick. Uh, yellow substance. So that's a really good source of nutrients, very high in energy, uh, very high in protein, and really importantly for the newborn lamb, that's full of immunoglobulins, which will give that lamb immunity from disease in early life. So that's what we want. Uh, two good lambs, milk in the other. The only thing we'll need to be careful about with this ewe is these teats um, are a little bit on the large side, uh, so they're almost uh, bigger than the lamb's mouth, so we'll just need to be careful and keep an eye on this ewe and our lambs over the next 24 hours to ensure that these lambs can actually suckle these large teats.